Welcome to How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships. From True Story FM, today, your mother called. She'd like you to meet a toaster. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Seth Nelson, and as always, I'm here with my good friend, Pete Wright. Divorce is hard, as we've said on the show many times, but love on the other side of divorce? You might feel like it's never going to happen. You might feel like you never want to try again. Well, we're joined by an exciting guest today who can not only help you realize that there can be love out there for you after your divorce, but also can help you navigate this confusing yet wonderful time. April Davis runs Luma, luxury matchmaking, a nationwide matchmaking service helping clients all across the country. April's always intuitively felt that she can help people not just meet other people, but find quality matches that are long lasting, take home to mama, marriage material type of love. And she's here to talk about that with us today. April, welcome to the toaster. Thank you for having me. So I want to preface this, Pete, before you get started. Any questions I ask, my fiance happens to be listening, asking for the show, asking for a friend. I want to get that out right away. <laughs> yeah, this is this is uh, this is a safe space, Seth. This is a safe space. April, I am uh, thrilled to have you here because I think this is uh, you know it's a conversation we we dance around uh, uh, often on the show, especially for people who are you know fresh out of divorce, trying to navigate what it means to quote get back out there. Uh, it, the world is is very very different, and so we very much like to talk about that with you today. But first matchmaker how did you know like i'm looking at the luma website you've got like 5000 people working for you it's massive you've got this massive cadre of matchmakers out there and i thought that uh it, we lived in an exclusively swipe left swipe right right world what how did you get into this business and uh and and what's your space you know matchmaking has been around for a long time. It's one of the oldest professions. And it's just basically, it's one of those things that I guess came to me naturally that I would meet someone and I would automatically think about who I could introduce them to, whether it was for dating, of course, or just friendships or business connections. It's an easy way to really make an impact in someone's life and to help them out. And so it's somewhat of a gift. And it's also just I think it's just a mindset, you know, thinking about how can I help people? Can you walk us through the the practical experience of of using a matchmaker service? Like what what would it look like for me? Again, asking for a friend. Uh, what would it look like for me to come to request your services? What we do is um, people would basically they can just go to our website, fill out the form and schedule a time to meet with one of the matchmakers. And the matchmaker will go through a whole series of questions so that we can understand who they are and who they're looking for in a match. And that way we can determine if we can even take them on as a client and if we have people to match them with. And then from there, we once they become a client, then we go even more in depth. We do a personality assessment and then also we'll um, do a search on their behalf to see who would be a good fit. And we end up interviewing on average about 50 people per client. So it's like we're going on those 50 first dates for them so they don't have to. And as you can imagine, it's a ton of work. <laughs> you can you can see my mind going, right? Right. <laughs> right. 50 first dates. That is a lot of first dates. And I remember uh, when I was way back in the dating world, my mother asked me, Seth, do you get nervous going on first dates? And I'm an extrovert. I said, absolutely not. I don't get a lot of second dates. I get nervous on the second date. <laughs> but 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 what's happening here is April's going to solve that problem for a lot of people. Right. Right. Yeah, we plan the date and we get feedback from both people afterwards so we can hear how it went and then we can relay any feedback to our clients if they Wait, wait, wait. wait. What do you mean you plan the date? This is great. Um, well, so if say it depends you know nowadays a lot of times people are doing stuff virtually so they're doing zoom or facetime for first date. um or if they do meet in person we'll figure out a good spot and time and everything and coordinate it so they just have to show up basically oh okay uh, i i want to get 
it, I, I want to get into more of the practicals, but you said something earlier that got my mind spinning. And I'm so again, I'm asking uh, for Seth mostly when you say <laughs> you don't you have to have them fill out a form to find out if you can even take them on. What are the criteria that would indicate you can't take them on? Well, first, the form is just to, it's like just their name and email and like contact information. We actually have a conversation. We meet with them. We'll do a, a Zoom or FaceTime meeting with them to determine if um, they have realistic expectations. So if, you know, it's somebody that is looking for someone that actually exists in our, in our database or not. So yeah, we've had to turn away people that, are maybe they're looking for someone in an age range or um, demographic that is just not there's we just don't have the people that would be looking for them and want to date them in return so the classic one is you know somebody say it's you know um i don't know like a 60 year old woman that wants to date like a, a 40 year old guy well there's, we just don't have enough of those guys that are open to dating someone 20 years older than them or vice versa, or man or woman, you know, vice versa and stuff. It just depends on the person and what, again, what they want and what their expectations are. You know, there could be a reason why they're not finding what they want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, I, I wasn't well, going to state the obvious. I was no, holding it, back, <laughs> Pete. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> but now that now that the obvious is out there, like at, at least it, it sounds like uh, it, you might be a helpful tool for these people to to actually say, here's the red flag. We can't help you. Maybe you should take this to heart and think right. about right. why you're not finding right. the person that you really want. Yeah, and I think a lot. Um, I think those people do. Most people are real. I'm just saying there's some people that we just, you know, we will talk to that we just don't think are a good fit for us or vice versa. And but for the most part, people have, you know, they're open minded. We, that's the, uh, the main thing is just being open minded because, you know, it's not like Amazon. We're not. <laughs> you can't just, um, you know, get whatever you, or McDonald's or Burger King and get whatever you, you want. I imagine that's really hard too right now, especially after two years of the pandemic. Like we, I think as human beings get rewired when we have certain behaviors with exchanges online and going to a website. It seems like this should be easy. Yeah, but I was just talking to a friend of mine. The supply chain's backed up. So mail order brides, <laughs> oh, way geez. backed up, Pete. That's, Come on. <laughs> that's not what we're talking. Shame oh, on you. I'm sorry. That's not I'm what we're sorry. talking about. I, I want to talk, I want to transition to this idea of uh, getting back out there, uh, because that's that's really, if you're listening to this show, you're likely in a position to have been married for some period of time, and we're, we're looking to help you, uh, dear listener, to get back out there. So uh, I, I turn to you, April, for your guidance. What what do you see when people come to you who have been um, who have been out of the dating market for many years? And and what do you do to help them transition back into if they if they feel like they're ready to to start looking again? Well, I think that's where a service like this can come in very handy for people that haven't been in, in, in the market. So the matchmakers work hand in hand. We act as date coaches to our clients. We can give them feedback. We can help them to put their best foot forward. So some clients might need help with deciding what to wear or what to do or what to say on a date. And that's where we can give them advice customized to each individual and what whatever it is that they need. So for example, we've um, we will connect them with a wardrobe stylist that will go through their closet basically and help them to get rid of things or help them decide, okay, this works for your body type. And then come up with ideas on what would be a fun first date for them. So maybe if they're a little bit more introverted, they might do better with an entertainment style date versus um, interview style day where they're sitting across the table from each other and just facing each other, feeling like they're in an interview. So it just really depends on the circumstances and the client, of course. I've got a million questions, Pete. You're uh, looking I, I at me. Hear, yeah, no, like, I'm looking because your mouth just started to open. Just no, like, like <laughs> yeah, you know, that's that's exactly how I make my arguments in court, too. <laughs> so it's not. not. <laughs> so, April, this is really interesting because it sounds to me on the one hand, and I'm going to be a lawyer, talk out both sides of my mouth, that it's almost as if you're having them put their best foot forward, like, hey, we'll come, we'll help you pick out the clothes and stuff. But really, 
what I was hearing the underlying of that is you're giving people confidence to get back out there. Yeah, there's definitely, that's a big part of it for sure. And then they are also, they know that the person that they're meeting is legit. You know, it's a good, someone that we've vetted for them and we think is a good fit, you know, wants the same things, you know, they're looking for a serious committed relationship as well. They're not just, you know, some scammer online or they're not looking. And and what about that person who's like, I just got to have a long relationship, just got to have a divorce. I'm just trying to get back out there. I want to have a nice time if it leads to something great, but I don't really feel like I'm getting married anytime soon, if at all. Is that how do you work through those issues? Or do you say, yeah, we've got people to meet. And if it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere. Absolutely. It, that's, that's totally it. It's, it's just, there's a lot of people online that are looking for casual hookups and that's not what we do. So we're looking for people and we're helping people that actually want a relationship and want a connection. Uh, talk to me about what is hard for people who are getting back into the, in, into the, the sort of marketplace for relationships. I I imagine people are coming to you saying, not only do I not know how to dress uh, and I don't want to be in an interview, but I don't even know, I I don't even have on my radar the kinds of mistakes I'm about to make on my first date back. What what are the kinds of things that you see that are challenges for folks? Well, there's just some things that um, come to mind that I've seen that uh, well, for example, you know, what not to talk about on a date. We try to steer people away from talking about politics or religion or sex or their their ex, you know. Oh, my God. I was jumping up and down over here. Do not talk about your ex. Right. That's that's one that a lot of people think, oh, well, we're here. I'm on a date. We both know that we're, we're both single. We both have dated before. We have that in common. So let's talk about that. And they end up turning it into a therapist type of session. And you know that we don't want to hear about your past relationships. They're there to get to know you. And, you know, um, you have been on this planet for many years. There's plenty of other things to talk about other than your ex. And usually it's not anything good <laughs> to say. And that negativity just, you know, carries through. And it may be, it may be justified, but that it just, it's still, it always is perceived as negativity and people will associate that with you and you want when you're on a date your mindset needs to be about giving that person a good time and having fun and it's hard to do that when you're just complaining or bitching about your ex <laughs> yeah do you hear that seth yeah i just absolutely. want to make sure that really sinks in because no, it, you're it, embarking it, on a new it, journey it, yourself. on a new journey here. i'm getting in so much trouble when she listens to this episode <laughs> i'm telling you now but here's the deal april and i will share this is uh when i was dating and I am a divorce attorney, people would say, well, what do you do? And I would say, well, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. And I would leave it at that. And then they would say, what kind of law? And I would say divorce. Yeah. And then I would always follow it up, which I thought was a very clear signal to set up boundaries that, you know, I work really hard and I work hard to at work. And I also work hard to leave work at work because I don't bring the divorces home with me. I am divorced. I'm very close with my former spouse. That's important to me. Like, I don't know how many different ways I was saying, do not tell me about your divorce. Oh, yeah. And in, inevitably, I would hear, oh, I had the worst divorce ever. And I'm thinking to myself, check, please, because they didn't get the hint. And they start telling me about the divorce, which, oh, by the way, is not the worst divorce ever, because which I would never do. But let me tell you about my day and what I was dealing with for these other people, not me. Right. So I, 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 it just was horrible. And all my buddies, I would tell them, Hey, if you're going out, don't talk about your ex. This goes right to it though, Seth. And I think what, what I, I think that gets what April was saying too. It's that this idea that not only should you not talk about your divorce, but you should be aware when you're in the situation, it's really hard not to talk about your divorce, right? It's the idea that, you know, we, this is a thing we have in common. Let's go ahead and talk about it. But it, you know, I, I, I know I shouldn't do a lot of other things, right? But I do them because it's really hard not to do those yeah. things. Uh, and so I think that's important if you're listening to this to know, you might be saying to yourself, yeah, I would never talk about my divorce until you're over that candlelit dinner and you're running out of things to talk about. And so suddenly the divorce starts spilling out of your mouth, right? It's always the last minute. You have no idea what you're talking about and then you're in divorce talk. 
yeah. That's a good point, actually, Pete. I never really thought of it that way. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna chalk one up for you there, buddy. God, that's solid. Bell? I don't. Have I know. A bell. <laughs> I know. <laughs> April, and when you're when you're helping these people that are actually looking for the relationship, and you're trying to connect them, what are the things that you're looking for there? And I know it's not just the superficial, but are you looking for how they deal with money, how they deal with sex, how their personalities mesh? Do they like to travel, introvert, extrovert? What like what's the underlying characteristics that ultimately make people click or don't? Well, the biggest things are people's values. So you start with, um, you know, if they want kids, if they already have kids, they don't want more kids, you know, if they, that's a big one or religion, it's really, it depends on what's important to the client, most important to the client. Maybe the client is um, at retired and you know, wants to travel a lot. So they're looking for somebody that can also have that same kind of lifestyle. And that's a strong value of theirs as well. So it really, it comes down to what's, what's the, the strongest, I guess, the values, first of all, because it's never going to work if two people are very different in say somebody wants kids and somebody doesn't, then that's never going, that's just not going to work. Um, so let's not even introduce them to begin with. And you'd be amazed. Well, maybe except you're not amazed because I'm sure you've met these people that end up getting married that think very differently about religion or children. And it's like, well, why did you even, you should have never got married to begin with. This is like basic one-on-one. But, right. And I never tell them that. They usually are telling me that, like, I knew it walking down the aisle, so to speak. Right. So, right. Yeah. People probably told them too and warned them, well, don't do it, <laughs> but they do it anyway. So, and that's actually part of why I started this business. My husband's a divorce attorney and I, we were sorry. relationships all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he'd tell me these stories and, you know, I meet them as clients now too. And it's, these people should have never got together to begin with so we try to keep them <laughs> from meeting someone that's so different um so off and then just put them in front of someone that complements their lifestyle have you seen uh, speaking specifically of like matchmaking characteristics have you seen a shift in what people are asking you to pair them with over the years i'm i'm wondering specifically because i, I you know i have i have a dear friends who've been married for a long time one of them is deeply conservative and one of them is deeply liberal and they honestly didn't know that about each other as they were getting married and that those sorts of that worldview kind of evolved over the years and i'm wondering if that's if if that's something you're seeing people are asking more about. Well, definitely after Trump was elected, that became an issue <laughs> that people, whereas before it wasn't as big of a deal, but it became a huge um, talking point for a lot of people. And also, I think um, the idea around gender roles, uh, as far as traditional versus, um, you know, somebody that, Wants wants someone like maybe a guy wants a woman that's independent, makes her own money, is has like that um, can you know take care of herself, or maybe he's somebody that you know he makes plenty of money for both of them, doesn't care what she does for a living. You know those that kind of thing has has um, I would say come up more clear. This just sounds really healthy to me because uh, I mean. I have this one friend who is very close with uh, my fiance. And when she was on the apps, she was going through like left, left, left of no, 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 no. And she's like, okay, went through all the inventory. But it was, and this is what everyone does, right? Left, right. <laughs> like they should call it the inventory. And, but no one's getting to these conversations. And maybe you're on three, four, five dates before you get to that conversation. But to at least know up front, like, hey, at least we've got some common ground here. That's the problem with the apps is you're just looking at a photo. You don't know these sorts of things and you're not even giving the person a chance. And people are so judgmental on one picture, you know, one flash. And I mean, 
we all don't take the best. <laughs> Not everybody takes great pictures, right? And so it can be, except for you, Pete, obviously. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're on a roll today, uh, Pete. I'm not like, fishing, but I like what uh, I caught. <laughs> not everybody can look like Pete. Um, <laughs> That's what they call him, the Robert Redford of the podcast world. <laughs> you know, they call me because they'll yeah. never see me. Right. Exactly. Uh, I, well, I think that's I think that's really great too. This whole point. I'm sorry. I'm I'm blushing now. Um, I, that that you are doing. You're. It sounds like you're doing the that sort of projection for people, right? You're 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 able to make it help them make the case in a more thorough manner. Yeah, we we see what people look like without the filters and without the editing and the you know the lighting and everything that people people do. To make it. <laughs> How What is the? I, I don't know if you even track this kind of stuff, but the kind of the the number of people who come to you and say, "I'm I'm done with the dating apps. I need help." Is that something you hear, or is it, or is it just a completely different clientele? Oh yeah, they're they're over it. They're sick of it. They're sick of people, you know, not having good intentions or lying or whatever it is, and or a lot of people are like, "My picker's broken." My picker's broken. Ding, ding, ding. Name of the show right there. Yeah. My picker's yep. broken. I love it. And it's so true, right? Well, it's hard to pick for yourself. If you're just looking for, looking at photos and you're judging people based on one photo, then you're narrowing it down to just, you're not seeing the full picture. And I guess I've been so programmed and what I do like, to not judge a book by its cover, to not judge people in general, because it, people are so unique and we think that we can stereotype we think we know everything about everybody and just oh yeah i know in five seconds if this is the one like you don't know anything about anyone in five seconds except for maybe if you're physically attracted to them but people we can become and they do become more attracted as you get to know them or you see them in different environments and you know i think that's so true because there's things that i learn about my fiance every day like, like, oh my God, like I didn't get that. And like, there's this little nugget, right? And then there's stuff that I know what she's going to do when she's going to do it, what the look means. And I like that just juxtaposition to like, they're, they're, it's just, I always find that very fascinating and interesting. Um, do people call with very specific, I'm looking for this? Yes. Yeah. We do get some people that are very focused and want, yeah, something very finite. So like when you say very like they call up and say, I'm looking for a short Jewish bald lawyer is, is I mean, are they getting that grand? I knew it was going to get there. I knew asking that's for where a friend, going. Pete, asking for a no. friend. <laughs> religion, especially um, religion. People that are Jewish have, um, people have used matchmakers forever and it's a big part of the culture and everything too. So there are a lot of times, yeah, they're looking for somebody at the same religion. And correct me if I'm wrong. Is it true that relationships tend to last if they're done with a matchmaker compared to other ways of meeting people? It's not necessarily with a matchmaker or not. It's um, arranged marriages, right? So arranged marriages are what end up people are happier, um, end up being happier 10 years from now instead of versus a, a romantic relationship because going what? into it. Yeah. They know, wow. Yeah. They know it, going into it that they have to work on it. And they have to um, work through things, but they are getting set up with a lot of those like basic things that we talked about earlier with the value system in place, the family system, the family, you know, that has chosen this person because of the values are similar and they're not just hung up on, oh, he's hot or she's hot and I'm attracted to them because all that fades away eventually. And what rears its head are those values ultimately. So when people going into a relationship that is arranged, they know that, hey, I'm going to have to work on it <laughs> to make, make this work. And so they're willing to do it. That was the stat I was thinking of. It wasn't matchmakers. It was arranged marriages. And that's right. Yeah. But it's a whole mindset, that's right? So interesting. I'm here yeah. for the long term. Mm -hmm. I don't know this person. I know we're going to have to work on becoming what we're going to become and however that gets defined, but our values are the same. And people that know us know that our values are the same. That's fascinating. Yeah. So they end up not only happier, but they the relationships work out long term more often. 
Huh. That's uh, that is fascinating. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Yeah. You would think it'd be just the opposite, right? Yeah. Especially nowadays where you have the freedom and you can, you know, they don't, people don't really do it as much, right? They yeah. Arrange right. marriages and you can get divorced more easily nowadays. But yeah. Ding, ding, it, ding. That music to my yeah. ears right there. <laughs> yeah, Pete. right. Yeah. Came, coming. Somebody just pulled the arm. But that's also, I mean, that is, that is the problem because it's so easy to be able to throw in the towel and call Seth and get a divorce. So, yeah. So, so let, how then do you, I mean, you already told you, you have wardrobe consultants, you have, you know, you have people that come in. How do you do any sort of like actual relationship coaching for people who come to you and are like, I'm divorced. I don't know how to do this. Clearly I need help. Yeah. Date coaching, um, relationship coaching, I think of as when there are actually people are in a relationship and yeah. mm-hmm. okay. it's more so around date coaching. So how, how do they show up? How do they um, portray themselves and um, a lot of confidence, you know, boosting and different things to help them to feel more confident going into the date. To, and, and I'm thinking specifically about like, how do you, how do you show up in the date in a way that's going to help you with the longer term commitment to a potential relationship? You know, I think the biggest thing is mindset going in being that of someone that is there to give versus receive. I think so many people go into a date and they're like, okay, show me why you, I think you deserve another, another date and show me like, impress me, you know, and they're like waiting for the sales pitch somehow. Right. Yeah. Well, they're waiting for the other person to do all the work, you know, do the song and dance versus putting any effort in themselves. And I've heard about it too, where, okay, they, they show up, somebody shows up for the date and they have very low expectations. They go to the bathroom and like spruce themselves up because they actually like this person. And like, really that obviously they didn't really put in that much effort until after they realized, Oh, this person is somebody that I might like. So (laughs) they put in an effort going just by going in the bathroom, but it's more so around, um, from being on and focused and like getting to know, asking them questions and listening and showing that you're interested because people like to talk about themselves and when they, and they like people that like them. So when they realize that this person is really into them, asking them questions, getting them talking about their passions and interests, then they're enjoying themselves more and more. So. It sounds like you should just live in the moment. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's, put the phone that's down. Way, that's one way to say it. No, but no, that's what you just described. Like, hey, you're interacting with someone, you're you're interested in what their hopes and passions and dreams are, and and if you find it inquisitive, if you're doing that and you're thinking about your ex or bringing up your ex, then you've just gone off the rails, right? Or if you're thinking about, is this the one I'm going to have to, you know, have some oh. person? Are we going to get married? Da, da, da. Like, do they check all my boxes? I need to, you know, that's not fun. Nobody wants to be on the receiving end of the 21 questions like <laughs> like that too. Um, what else we, we talked about, you obviously don't talk about your divorce. What else is off the table in your, uh, in your guidance? Do you talk about, you know, work and kids and all those other things or? For sure. Um, it's more like religion, sex, politics. We, you can talk about it, but just not on the first date. We say, <laughs> give it a couple of dates before you get into those topics. You know, if it's something that I'm, um, they're dead set against dating somebody that's a Republican. You know, that's something that we can weed out again, you know, ahead of time. But, um, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I need to make sure that they're aligned with me. So I need to, you know, make sure I weed out those people. But there's just certain things that we try to get those things that it's, they're such hot topics. So you should just try to steer clear of them because again, they can bring out the negativity <laughs> and, right. um, and, you know, talking about sex with somebody that's basically a stranger, that's can be awkward for people. So you should have listened to some of the previous shows we've had on. Absolutely. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> um, but the thing I was going to ask you just about that whole topic about what to talk about and what not to talk about is when you're kind of in that moment and you are having a good time, right? You put yourself out there if you're like, "Mm, I hope he calls again. or I hope she calls again. Does she want to have a second date? So if someone is working with you 
Is that topic off the table? They kind of have to come back and report to you. How did things go? Or is that okay to, to throw out there? Yeah, we want them to, you know, exchange um, information and take it from there. They don't need to go back to us and, you know, say it, well, is it all right if we go on another date? We want to get feedback, of course, so we can take that to our client if we need to, or we just, so we know what's going on. And so say they don't like our client, then we, then we know why. And we can relay that feedback to our client. Like, because a lot of the times it's just perception, you know, you didn't mean to do this, but maybe this is how it was perceived. So FYI, you should know that you come across as maybe aloof and actually you were just nervous. And so next time, Let's work on getting you more talking more or asking questions and like warmed up or maybe you need to have a glass of wine before <laughs> so whatever it is. Or or two. two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Not, not any more than that though. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's another that's another role. Like don't get drunk on the on the date. On the on the first and, date. And, and what about do people say, hey, I've never been married, so I don't want to be with someone that's divorced or I'm divorced. I want to be with someone that's divorced, not with someone that hasn't been married before. Do you ever get that dynamic working? We do, but not too much. It's more about kids, more so that we get people that, oh, I don't want somebody that has young kids or I want somebody that does want to have more kids. But the whole divorced or um, not, not so much. It would be more so like with younger people that... um, that maybe they have that kind of preference, you know, but usually we try to get people to be open-minded too, because you just never know the circumstances or there's so many exceptions. So it reminds me of, you know, this topic around like any, anything that's in the news, you know, or anything that's being debated, there's always exceptions to everything. And we can't just assume that we know everything about everyone. What's the most surprising match you've ever made? Um, a surprising match. I guess um, what I what I think is what I see playing over and over again is I'll put a couple together that I think oh yeah this is perfect they're we're done this is exactly who each other are looking for and they don't like each other and then I might put together somebody that's like no nah, maybe whatever and they end up they end up kick, you know hitting it off and you know going off into the sunset that's always it's always interesting to me when we can't predict these things and i've been doing this for over uh gosh since 2010 so if i can't predict it i don't i just don't, i don't think anybody else can either of course you can predict like oh it's not going to work well yeah with that attitude of course it's not going to work because you right have attitude but it, that's what's interesting you're really more about the process of hey let me do those 50 first dates. I'm going to put you with someone that aligned. is here for the, for the same reasons, at least aligned on X, Y, and Z based on your personalities and what you're saying is important to you. They're, they're not here for just hookups. So there's a lot of benefits to having all that and to help you get your confidence back. And ultimately, you might meet someone that, that turns out to be long-term and maybe you don't, but it's... It seems to me you're more about the process in getting there. You can't put your ultimate worth on whether someone stays married 10, 15, 20 years down the road. No, definitely not. We we help them to get into a relationship. We can't keep the relationship going only. That's your job, Pete. Right. I'm there. I'm the, <laughs> I'm, I'm the new mascot. <laughs> what uh, what what do you do you have a rough statistic on on just how many people uh, come to you who are divorced versus have never been married? Off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, I'd have okay. to look. We, I don't we don't have all that information on everyone that comes to no, us. No, sure. Only people yeah. that we've actually interviewed in that way. Well, I just think it's so interesting. And I, I, I feel like uh, this conversation is really illuminating. And I hope that people who are in the divorce process or recently out of the divorce process who've never considered uh, engaging in the services of a matchmaker, that is, a, I think, a really special connection and a, a special opportunity that, that should be in the bouquet of options when you're ready to get back out there. It sounds extraordinarily helpful. Well, it sounds a whole lot better better than swiping yeah and i would say yeah the majority of the people that come to us are divorced or um, maybe widowed too 
the other lot, but most people are because it just the demographics, it's like 40 plus. So most people have been married at that time. Okay. That's fascinating. All right. Well, tell us a, a little bit more. Give us the pitch for uh, Luma and where people can find you and more about your wonderful team of matchmakers. So basically, I mean, we're a nationwide company. I, mean, I started the company in 2010 and it's for people that are, you just have discerning taste and they're not wanting to waste their time going on a bunch of dates and going online. They're looking for something specific or someone specific and um, they can go to our website to learn more and join and just they can either be part of our network to be considered as a match to our clients or they can be a proactive client themselves and all they have to do is just go to the website at lumasearch.com and it's l-u-m-a search.com and fill out the profile form set up a meeting to meet with a matchmaker and um, she'll meet with them via facetime or zoom and go from there. What is the uh, uh, what's the investment somebody can expect to make in the matchmaking process in terms of what does it cost? It varies. It depends. It's all customized depending on who they are and what they're looking for and how much resources we might um, have to put towards their search or what level of um, of a search that they do. So it can be free. They can just be part of the database or we have programs that go up to 100,000 too. That's for a guy like me that there's going to be a lot of work. A lot of work. To find so someone much work. for me. I, I know. no idea. But I do have this. What about people that I call geographically undesirable? You're all over the nation. Mm -hmm. So do we try to limit that? Or if people are open, like, hey, I'm at a stage of my life where I might be willing to move if I meet the right person, even if they're in, you know, yeah, we, upstate New York and I'm living in Texas. We try to get people to be open to dating anywhere or um, just to open up their geographic boundaries in general. But um, that's a reason why we wouldn't take someone is if they aren't open, because we need we need to have you know the kinds of people they're looking for. And if there's only wanting to date you know ten miles from home, well, it may not be possible. <laughs> so. Uh, last last question for me, I promise. When you talk about the scope of your database, like if I let's just say I'm a new client, how many people do you, are you currently have you screened that that are in the database? We have over twenty five thousand people in our database that we can we can tap twenty five thousand. It's nationwide. It's, I, I just I, the the blind squirrel nut metaphors are just screaming at me right now. <laughs> yeah. That's imagine all those people online that are just getting in, or people creating fo false profiles in your you and know, in your swipe swiping. left, right, yeah, right. These are screened human beings. That's right. Yeah, that's right. What I a difference! It. So uh, this is this is great. Thank you so much, April, for joining us, for being a part of the show today, for teaching us, because we are we don't know anything, really. I know nothing about dating. I know a lot about divorcing. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> so he lives on the downhill side. Um, uh, this has been really fascinating. Thank you, uh, April Davis, on behalf of Luma uh, Luxury Matchmaking. Uh, don't forget, everybody, uh, you can ask us questions. Bring us those questions. Uh, head over to uh, howtosplitatoaster.com slash questions, and you can ask us questions, and we'll answer them. Seth will answer them, and I'll make jokes. Uh, and, <laughs> it's always better that way. <laughs> that's, that's what we'll do. Uh, don't forget to do that. We love your questions, and we'd love to talk about them some more. So thank you very much. On behalf of April Davis and Seth Nelson, America's favorite divorce attorney, I'm Pete Wright. And we'll catch you next week right here on How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships. Seth Nelson is an attorney with Nelson Coster Family Law and Mediation with offices in Tampa, Florida. While we may be discussing family law topics, How to Split a Toaster is not intended to, nor is it providing legal advice. Every situation is different. If you have specific questions regarding your situation, please seek your own legal counsel with an attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction. Pete Wright is not an attorney or employee of Nelson Coster. Seth Nelson is licensed to practice law in Florida.